Welcome in to Allen Hancock College, home of your Hancock College Bulldogs. It is the 2023 football season, and we are minutes away from the first contest of the season, but also the first time the Bulldogs have played the Pirates of Orange Coast College. I am CJ Silas, alongside my partner, Greg Pensa, bringing you all the action here today. Welcome into the broadcast booth for our first time. Oh, great to be with you, CJ. I've listened to you a few times, oh, enjoyed gee. your broadcast. Oh, so, gee. Uh, it's fun to be here. Uh, as you know, I do San Inez High School football yes. for 40 years. in his third season. Buddy Garcia, first year wide receivers coach, and Joe Parker in his ninth season as the offensive line coach. George Heather is back on the D-line. Don Cross, his second season coaching defensive backs, and Dan Atencio working with the specialists and a few other assistant coaches as well. It is gonna be very interesting to see conferences, leagues align differently every couple years, and the Bulldogs have shifted. Not gonna be an easy season, but starting off today against the Pirates. Well, Bulldogs coming off a successful year last year. They yes. won the, the Strawberry Bowl. They actually were in a three-way tie for the league championship. And a very exciting game. I caught that game, 20-17 uh, to 17 over Moor Park, sort of a rival from the Ventura area. So, And they will be playing Moor Park later in the season. So it was a very exciting season. Coach Dutra, the winningest coach here at uh, Hancock. So he brings a lot to the table. But Ricky... Uh, Aguilar was an all-state linebacker he here. He sure Atlanta. was. So he not only walked the walk, he was out there right on this, not on this particular field, probably over at Rigetti or Dave Boyd playing football. So uh, He was on the coaching staff here with Chris Dutra from 2009 to 2018, spending some time at Lompoc, Pioneer Valley as well, and working in special education. And he is back, and he's leading the way. But he's not the only Aguilar in football in this area. His father, Richard, played at Hancock. And, and Rick is actually named Rick. It's not a nickname. He is named Rick Aguilar. His dad was a Richard. And Rick, not only a football player, but also was a pitcher and an outfielder and a first baseman, played Cypress baseball, and he is now leading the way. Your Bulldogs have just come on to the field, folks, wearing their gold pants, their blue jerseys with their gold numbers, and their white helmets with just a few minutes to get underway with the start. I am alongside Greg Pensa, joining me, doing some football. I do want to give you a quick rundown of the Orange Coast coaching staff. Head coach Bubba Gonzalez has worked with the defensive line for the Pirates as well. He played at UNLV. He's got an offensive quarter, uh, coordinator as JT New Yamada, um, an assistant linebacker and secondary coach Junior Tagaloa. He's also a national director of regional combines in the NFL. He's done that for 11 years and then the quarterback coach Daniel Falkenstein before coaching at Orange Coast, Bubba Gonzalez, a police officer in Fountain Valley, and now he's leading the Pirates here on the field against your Bulldogs. Getting set, as we always do, the first game of the season will give us a little bit of a view into who is playing what for the Bulldogs at the junior college level. It is always a little different to figure out who's who, and the Bulldogs won the coin toss. They are deferring until the second half. That means... Bubba Gonzalez's Pirate Squad is back to receive the kick. They're wearing their white uniforms, their black numbers outlined in orange with the orange helmets. And here we go, game one of the 2023 season. Your Bulldogs kicking off for the Bulldogs, Aroth Acosta, the sophomore out of Santa Maria, a Pioneer Valley product. Greg Pensa, along with CJ Silas and technical director Brian Dill. The kick is up, it's a shorty, and it's a fair catch at the 32 where the Orange Coast Pirates will take over. We're also grateful that our spotters 
Noah and Alyssa are here to help out with us as well. And uh, Jakai is on music. And the returner for the Orange Coast College Pirates who called the fair catch was Jaden Cabs. And Coach Gonzalez did tell us that he'll be using a two-quarterback system to start the game today. And let's see. It looks like it's going to be Baylor Ayers. He is the quarterback to start off first and 10 from their own 34. Thanks for tuning in. Game one of the 23 campaign. He gives it off to Corrigan. Not much running into quite a few Bulldogs on the D-line. Maybe a gain of one yard if lucky. Well, when Rick was here as a defensive coordinator for Hancock, twice they were in the top 10 of the state and holding teams to rushing. I think one year, 64 yards, they were like third in the in the, in the state of California. So, First quarter underway here, no score, second and nine for the Pirates after a gain of one. Once again, it's Corrigan with the ball, and he's got nothing, absolutely nothing. That D-line for the Bulldogs fired up. Ezekiel Suimalo <laughs> pumped up. Brody Tucker. And these Bulldogs are ready for action today on the field. And that's a loss of four on the play, taking it back now to a third and 12. This time a pass play incomplete by Ayers. Looks like he was looking for Willie. And it's a fourth down. Nice defensive stance for the Bulldogs to open up this game, Greg. Well, a lot of pressure by the Bulldogs up front. And uh, they have an experienced sophomore quarterback. He threw for almost 900 yards last year. So uh, Pirates putting in some pressure on him. And now they'll be facing a fourth down. And we'll say about 12 here. And Sandy, or uh, excuse me. Makai Puga is back to receive the punt. He's at the 30. He's running up to the 35. He's at the 38. And he's tackled quickly, but it'll be nice position on the field for the Bulldogs as they take their first offensive possession of the 23 campaign. Well, he took a little bit of a chance. It was good coverage by Orange Coast, and he caught that on the fly. And that uh, gets a little dicey sometimes, So, but he made a nice... You always want to see him catch the ball, because when it bounces on the turf, you never know where it's going to go. At least here, it's field turf. First and 10 for the Bulldogs from their own 38-yard line. No score early in the first quarter. Jackson Clavel running the plays for the Bulldogs. Ferrari Busby wearing a new number this year, number 16. And he's the first ball carrier for the Bulldogs. Now well, he picked up a couple yards. And as... The Bulldogs usually do. They're in and out with two different backs. This one coming in is John Allen, also a sophomore. Busby, the first play from scrimmage to open up the season. John Allen uh, from Tafuna High School from American Samoa comes in on the second and eight from the 40. Clavelle under center. This time. A nice run up the middle, a little hole for the running back, Allen. That was a nice opening by the offensive line on that right side. So it's going to bring up a third down and three for the Bulldogs. They're at their own 45-yard line, their first drive of the day. Looked like Joey Garza was running that ball. Interesting to see him used as a tight end, uh, one of the leaders on the Bulldog football team. A nice gain. It's third and short here for the Bulldogs with just about 12 and a half minutes left to go in the first quarter. No score. This one, it's given to Busby. Runs over to the right, and he gets nowhere. Actually loses a couple yards. It's now going to be a fourth down for the Bulldogs. And the Pirates playing strong defense, just like the Bulldogs did to start off the, the first quarter. Well, Nui Aloha making that stop, read that play from the get-go. And actually, the Bulldogs lose a couple yards. Caden Batista back to receive this punt for the Pirates. When I talked to Coach Gonzalez on the phone yesterday, he says Baptista is one of his busiest players on the field, not only a specialist. Oh, he picks it up. He lets it bounce inside the 10. And some might have thought he was going to let it roll, but he picked it up and ran on the far sideline out of bounds inside the 20. 
and the Pirates will take over. Batiste Papista from Kona Waiena High School in Kona, Hawaii. Uh, Bubba Gonzalez, the head coach for Orange Coast, said he relies on this kid for a lot, not just leadership on special teams, but also offensively. Well, he made a good decision there, CJ, because that ball would have died at about the three-yard line, and he picked it up and got him some a little bit of field position, but they're pinned deep in their own territory, the Orange Coast Pirates. First and 10 from the 15, no score early in the first quarter here. Bulldogs opening up their campaign. Thank you so much for tuning in. Corrigan, the ball carrier, not much. Got a penalty on the play, it's an offsides. And it's gonna be against the Bulldogs. First penalty of the game for the Bulldogs. That'll take it five yards from the first and 10 now. They'll be at the 20. First and five for the visiting Pirates. Play clock's at 22. Another handoff from Ayers. It's interesting, uh, Orange Coast really hasn't tried to pass the ball and Ayers threw for over eight, almost 900 yards last year. No gain on the play. Second down for the Pirates. Ayers in trouble, scurrying, and he's taken down. Sack. What a sack. What a play. Well, good pressure by the Bulldogs that time, Ayers had nowhere to go. So it's going to bring up a third down and eight. Darian Prothrow on the sack. First sack of the season for the Bulldogs. Third and seven looks like Ayers is trying to find somewhere to go. And a desperation pass. It's incomplete. And it'll move to a first down. He was looking. He was looking for the wide receiver Trevor Thomas on the play. Well, Javaris. Franklin for Hancock was all over him, and it brings up a fourth down in a punting situation. I was surprised he even got that ball away. He was actually falling as he threw it away. Those are the kind that usually get intercepted. <laughs> right, too. right. No score here. Another fourth down for the Pirates. Another three and out. Good work by the Bulldogs defensively. That looks like there's a whistle, flag on the play. Makai Puga back as the punt returner again for the Bulldogs. Well, Bulldogs should come out of this with pretty decent field position. Puga standing back at about his own 45. He's giving a lot of respect to the punter for Orange Coast here. The penalty the fourth and 12. Jackson Tola with the punt. It's a short one. Ooh. It bounces at the 40, and I'm not sure a Bulldog touched it or not. It looks like someone did. Well, let's hope and not. And the Pirates, looks like the Pirates might have taken control of the ball after it was touched by a Bulldog. Nope, it looks like they're giving it to the Bulldogs. Confused by uh, what the officials are doing with the ball. Well, it was where the punt came down. It, there was uh, one, a Hancock player there. And then the ball bounced another 10 feet down the field. Wisely, Orange Coast jumped on it because if it's a live ball, they would have had it. But apparently, they're downing it at the 46-yard line of Orange Coast. So Bulldogs will take over there. It'll be a first down for the Bulldogs on the Pirates 46. Clavel, nice pass. Maximo Falerto. The receiver on that, CJ. He's a slow high school kid, a sophomore. A local kid in his second year with the Bulldogs, 6'3", th 185, with the first reception of the game for Allen Hancock and their first first down. Ball moved to the 33. Clavel under center, backs her in the eye. He fumbles up a little bit, the snap, but Still finds a way to hand it off. Well, it, that looked like a fumble 
in the making there, but uh, the running back for the Bulldogs was able to hold on to it. So it will be a second down and about six for the Bulldogs at the 30-yard line of Orange Cove. Lavelle's under center. This time it's a pitch. Nice run on the near side by J.P. Luketu, the sophomore out of Eagle Crest High School. He runs and gets pushed out of bounds. And it looks like it's another Bulldog first down. Well, he did a great job of reading his blocker, C.J. He was thought for a minute about cutting it back in, but he stayed along the sideline and probably picked up another five yards. So. Bulldogs, promising drive developing here. First and 10 from the 16, Matuliki Tupuo, Tupuoyu is in. And that is a complete pass to A.J. Masunu. Well, Cabral uh, threw that one a little low. A nice uh, job of catching, just catching the ball. Joey Garza in on the offensive side of the ball. Now, Maximo the, Sotero is set up on the near side, the one wide receiver. And Masunu in the backfield. As well as Luketu. This time it's a complete pass to Sutton. Soltero into the end zone for a touchdown. Oh, wow. It looked like his knee was down outside the goal line there. So Six-yard touchdown catch for Maximo Soltero, the sophomore out of Slow High School. First touchdown of the season for the 2023 Bulldogs. Well, Soltero did a good job of grabbing that ball and getting into the end zone. Right where he was supposed to be. Rod Costa, the sophomore, will... Not only punting, kicking off, but now he's in for the field, uh, the uh, extra point duties, probably the field goals as well. The holder is Collins Petaway, the wide receiver, and there's a flag on the play. Bulldogs with the lead, the first lead of the game with 7.53 remaining in the first quarter, 6 nothing. Bulldogs on a Sol Soltero six-yard touchdown catch. And a false start. Against the offense, it's a five-yard penalty. They'll move back. Costa, a sophomore from Pioneer Valley High School, Santa Maria. Got some experience last year with the Bulldogs, and it looks like he's doing a majority of the kicking duties so far today. So pet away the holder. The kick, it's up. It's got the distance. And it's good. Bulldogs lead at 7 0 with 7.53 remaining in the first quarter. You're listening to AHCBulldogs.com. Welcome back to Allen Hancock College. The Bulldogs with the first score on the board, leading 7-0 back to receive the kick. Kazushi. It's a short kick. Calls it a fair catch. And Orange Coast will take over, trailing your Bulldogs 7-0. Great defense so far by the Bulldogs, holding Orange Coast to a couple three and outs, and then offensively moving the ball down the field nicely. Well, they got excellent field position and uh, took advantage of it. Mixed the run and pass pretty balanced and uh, got in for the score. So they've been able to apply a lot of pressure to the quarterbacks on Orange Coast so far this afternoon. And uh, 
Now, Garza was defensive player a couple years ago. There's two Garzas. Oh, okay. That's why. There's brothers Garzas. One is gone. Okay. First and 10 for the Bulldogs, at the 20, for the Pirates at the 26th. And now a different quarterback in for Orange Coast. Bubba Gonzalez let us know that Zach Congleton might see some time under center. And he is now the quarterback here in this set of offensive downs. And there is a penalty against Orange Coast. It's five-yard penalty. It'll be first and 15 now from the 21. And when I spoke to Coach Gonzalez yesterday, he did talk about the sophomore Ayers getting some time out of Linden High School in Linden, Washington, as well as Congleton, the freshman out of Etiwanda High School in Rancho Cucamonga. And Congleton is calling the plays now here in the first quarter. Well, the Bulldogs jumped off sides, so they'll return the favor here. Congleton is supposed to be a little more athletic quarterback. Might see him run a little more than Ayers. Erwin Taomi jumped off sides for the Bulldogs. Having a discussion down there about this penalty. And now they're going to mark it off against the Bulldogs. So it'll put it right back to the original line of scrimmage. And it'll be first and 10 for Orange Coast from their own 26-yard line. They trail 7 to nothing here in the first quarter. First and 10 from the 26 after the penalty for the Pirates, trailing 7 0. This time it's Treratola, the ball carrier. Not much movement. That D line so far today has been tight right there on the line of scrimmage. Well, they're getting penetration, CJ, and they're, they're in the backfield when the running back for Orange Coast gets the ball. So good penetration by the Hancock line so far this afternoon. Second and 10. Congleton in the shotgun. A quick pass from the line of scrimmage. And it's complete at the 31 to Baptista. A little slant that time, and Baptista had the angle on the pirate or on the bulldog defender. They'll bring up about a third five, down and five. Five yard gain on the play for the Pirates. And let's see. Orange Coast still looking for its first four, first down of the game. Congleton, the freshman, now the quarterback in the shotgun with one back in the slot for blocking. And this one's intended for Baptista, but nice coverage by Aaron Small Jr., the sophomore DB out of Gainesville, Florida. And now it's a fourth down for the Pirates. Yeah, great job by Small. He was right on him. Knock the ball away. So, Fuga's back to receive this punt for the Bulldogs. He'll be standing back about his own 35. So, the defense has been the story for the Bulldogs so far here, CJ. It's Orange Coast has really been a unable to do anything. 6.37 remaining in the game and the first quarter. Bounces at the 43, no one's going to touch it until it drops and stops at the 42. Bulldogs will take over after another defensive stop by Hancock's defense, not allowing the Pirates a first down yet here in the game. And they'll take over now, Bulldogs, another offensive set of downs from their own 42 with a seven-point lead. Well, the Bulldogs have been known for their defense over the years, and they've uh, stymied Orange Coast so far today. Bulldogs unable to scrimmage this year. That got canceled, so it's really the first game for the Bulldogs. First and 10, Busby in the backfield with Clavel under center. Ball at the 42. Gives it to Busby. Bubsy, Busby runs to the right. Can't find much. Maybe a gain of one or two yards on the play. Busby one of the offensive leaders from the, the backs last season offensively, the sophomore out of Desert Pines High School in Las Vegas, Nevada. He's 5'6", 180, but he uses his size and his, and his height to find some holes along the way. Well, he's built low to the ground, CJ, so he's got some good leverage. 
Gain of three on the play, second and seven. This time, it's a pitch to John Allen, and Allen crosses midfield, and it's a Bulldog first down. What a run by the sophomore John Allen. Well, he had some speed, got around the corner there, CJ, and a nice seal block was allowed him to pick up some good yardage, and the Bulldogs are in business at the 38-yard line of Orange Cove. John Allen, the sophomore, Allen and Busby, two of the main running backs for the Bulldogs last season. You know, the Bulldogs system uses two, three, four, maybe five running backs the first half of the year until they settle in on who will be their starters. First and 10 from the 38. Lavelle, it's batted down at the line of scrimmage. What a play by Joseph Neer. Joseph Neer is one of the defensive leaders even though he's just a freshman for the Pirates, Coach Gonzalez and I chatted about him yesterday, and he says, this is a kid you're going to see make big plays defensively for the Pirates. Well, he got his arms up that time, CJ, and he, he's 6'3", but he looked like he was about 6'10 on that play. So. Second and 10. Bulldogs with a seven-point lead. Welcome in, in case you're just joining us. A six-yard touchdown run by Soltero, and the Bulldogs lead at 7-0. John Allen, the ball carrier again, but he has nowhere to go running in to a group of Pirates. We've got a Pirate down on the field. Isaiah Airline, another wearing a new number this year. Isaiah Airline, a sophomore out of Pasco High School in Washington. He will be another one we'll be seeing a lot of this year for the Bulldogs on offense. But then also, Coach Aguilar is talking to me about a freshman, a local freshman, Elias Martinez out of Rigetti. So keep your eye out for tight end number 83 because it looks like he's someone that Coach Aguilar might give a a bunch of playing time too, as well as Collins Petaway, the sophomore wide receiver, who didn't really play much at the beginning of last season. Well, Coach Aguilar, since they didn't have a the luxury of having a scrimmage, just wants to get into the game and see what he's got out here on the field. And he wants to limit the mistakes, obviously, and just have him compete. Because you get tired of playing against your guys in practice. It's nice to get out on the field against a uh, an opponent. The first game of the season is always a learning curve for both sides of the football, offense and defense, and both coaching staffs. So we've got a timeout on the field. The Bulldogs will take their first timeout of this first half, and we will take a timeout as well. With the Bulldogs leading at 7 nothing. you're listening to Bulldog Football at ahcbulldogs.com. even get touched yeah he, he was wide open there the total blown coverage by Orange Coast and once he caught the pass it was just a foot race to the end zone so Bulldogs up 13 nothing he the ran he ran down the sideline for the second score of the Bulldogs and if I remember correctly they've got their second touchdown and the Pirates haven't even gotten their first first down here comes Roth Acosta 
for the extra point. It's 13-0 with 4.40 remaining. Bulldogs with another score on the Busby run. Kicks up, and it's good. Bulldogs now lead it. 14-0 with 4.40 remaining in the first quarter. You're listening to Bulldog Football at ahcbulldogs.com. Welcome back to Allen Hancock College Football. A 38-yard touchdown for Ferrari. Busby makes it 14-0 after the Acosta extra point. And on the kickoff, what a hit to the near side. Jaden Cavs was the runner. He had the ball, and he ran right into a solid hit by Bulldogs. Special team and the Pirates will take over. Still looking for their first full, first, first down of the game. It was so surprising to me, Greg, when I saw that these two teams have never played football. They play in other sports, but they've never played football against each other. I was looking down all the teams that Hancock had played, and I had thought for sure they would have played Orange Coast. They're out of Costa Mesa, so. We've been down there, but it was Long Beach, Fullerton, but not for Orange Coast. First and 10 for the visiting Pirates from their own 30. Mendoza, the ball carrier. I don't know if you noticed, but there is a woman official down there on the near side. Just wanted to recognize that women are referees and officials, too. Yes, and we have her name here somewhere, too. No gain on the play. Second and ten for the Pirates. Split wide receivers. Royster on the near side. Another run play right up the middle, and no gain, maybe even a loss. Defense for the Bulldogs are fired up. Well, Rick Aguilar's got to love this game today because he was a linebacker. He was All-State his sophomore year, and it's been Bulldog defense all day as we have an injured player on the field for Orange Coast. Pirates still looking for their first down, trailing 14-0. Bubba Gonzalez, the head coach, also works with the D-line for the Pirates. And with an injury on the field, we're going to take a timeout. With the Bulldogs up 14-0, we'll come right back after this injury timeout. You're listening to AHC Bulldogs. Welcome back. Good to see Paul Mendoza getting up on his own and running over to the Pirates' sideline uh, off, off the air. We were just talking about Coach Gonzalez. He's got a very successful football career at, at all levels, really. Well, he coached at Modern Day High School. He went to Modern Day High School. In his senior year, they were the national champions of the United States. So if you know anything about high school football, Modern Day is the, like the quarterback yes. factory. Bryce Young. A lot of sports. A lot of sports. Yeah, not just football. Latter day. Latter day. Third and ten. Got three wide receivers on the far side. Congleton drops back and he's going to keep it. He's running to the 30, the 35, and he jogs out of bounds at the 38 yard line for an eight yard gain. Probably the biggest gain they've had so far. Well, they said Congleton was a. Uh, athletic guy and he was under pressure and he had some room to the outside so it brings up a fourth down and two or excuse me one and looks like Orange Coast is going to punt. The freshman 6'1", 185 using his speed also uh, airs a 6'2", 205 taller quarterbacks for the Pirates and on the fourth and short they're going to come in with their punting team 
and Makai Puga. Now we have a penalty on the play here, CJ. It appears it's going to be against, against Orange Coast. Against Orange Coast. It's a five-yard penalty jogging the Pirates back five yards. Puga ready to field the punt at the 28-yard line in Bulldog territory. It's a high snap. Ooh, and the blocked. punt is blocked. And it's at the 15. And the Bulldogs land on it at the 18-yard line. Zero blocked it for a what a What a great special Trent teams Gimble. play. Trent Gimmel, the sophomore, heads up play for the Bulldogs. Well, he broke through untouched. CJ wow. got his hands up and great job. He didn't know where the ball was, but uh, a nice job by Kimball there. It was a high it. snap that started it. Yeah. That was the problem. The, the, the punter had to jump up to get it, so he was lucky he even got the punt off at all. And then it was blocked. And here, the Bulldogs with great field position. Clavel under center. It's a first and 10 from the 17. He gives it. To, wow. to Puo, to Pu, to Pou, to Pou, I'll get it, I'll get it, to Pou. Practice makes perfect. <laughs> I'm not proud, I'm just honest. Well, there's some difficult names on this roster. I just wanted to tell you, CJ, the headlinesman is Christy Wilson. Thank you, Christy Thank Wilson, you. recognizing a woman in the officiating crew. I'm excited for the day we don't even notice because there are so many out there. Second and one. Oh, and it looks like right into the end zone for J.P. Luketu. An eight-yard touchdown run for the sophomore. Six more points on the board for your Allen Hancock College Bulldogs. Wow, that O-line. Welcome back to Allen Hancock College. C.J. Silas along with Greg Pensa. Yes. I got it right. Yes, Come on, yes, man. Yes. I just met you today. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. 21-0. Bulldogs with the lead. Luketu with the touchdown. And here is the kickoff. Bouncing at the 15. Picked up by Onuki. Kasashui, Kas, Kashushi Onuki from Japan is one of the newer players for the Pirates. A couple Japanese players on the Pirates football squad. I noticed that looking down the roster. I love it, I love the international play. One of them's a kicker, too. Well, it's been all Bulldog defense here today. CJ. And the offensive line has really helped. First and 10 from the 29. Airs back in as the quarterback. Corrigan, the ball carrier, and he loses a yard or so. 
Well, if Orange Groves is going to get back into this game, CJ, they've got to open up their offense. They're down three scores, and they're happy to run the ball. They're just playing right into the Bulldogs' hands. Second and 12. Corrigan in the backfield with Ayers. Corrigan with the ball. Again, right into three Bulldogs. Well, Darlon Harlow making the stop, so it's going to bring up a third down and 12. As Orange Coast going backwards now. The D-line is tough right now for Allen Hancock. You can just see the energy and the fire with the way they're, especially right around that center position, right up the middle, just clogging the holes for the Pirates. Third and 12. This time, a pass play on the far sideline, and it's intercepted. Intercepted by Adarius Odom, and he's still running to the near side towards the Gonna middle go. of the field at the 20, to the 10, to the five. Touchdown, Adarius Odom. Oh my goodness gracious. A 20, wow. Odom, the sophomore out of Flomaton High School with another Bulldog score on the interception. Wow, we haven't even played one quarter of football. <laughs> We've got four touchdowns here. We got 46 and seconds left. And they're all Hancock. And they're all Hancock. 27 nothing the score. Under a minute to go, Adarius Odom, he had some vertical too. He jumped high in the air to make that interception. It was a overthrown pass play by Ayers. And now here we go, Arafa Costa's been busy today. Field goals, punts, kickoffs, no field goals yet. No. <laughs> extra points, punts, and kickoffs. And here is his fourth extra point attempt of the day. Oh, what an athletic play and run on that interception. And it's good. 28 to nothing. Bulldogs with the lead. We will take a timeout. You're listening to Allen Hancock College Bulldog Football at ahcbulldogs.com. A penalty or something for Welcome Colorado. back to Allen Hancock College. It's 28 nothing. a fair catch for the Pirates at the 27-yard line. A 56-yard interception return for a touchdown for the sophomore, Adarius Odom. Six foot 185. He used his height on that because he had to jump pretty high to make that interception. And Bulldogs lead at 28 to nothing. And here comes Bubba Gonzalez's offense back on the field, first and 10 with 46 seconds left in the first. Ball is at the 28, 27-yard line. Lairs threw that up for grabs, and Odom was like he was playing center field. He grabbed that, and he made a nice cut. He caught it on the far sideline and ended up in the, in the the uh, on the opposite side of the field going in for the touchdown. He cut from the far side all the way to this side. It made it nice for us to see it so clearly. Whip. Another pass play. This one. It's a quick pass to Baptista, but there is a flag on the play. I think the Bulldogs might have jumped off sides. They were coming with a blitz, and the outside linebacker was trying to time it, and I think he jumped off sides. You're right. Offsides against the Pirates, or the Bulldogs. It'll be a first and five. It'll move it from the 27 up to the 32-yard line. It'll have another chance at a first down. 
Well, you can just tell the Bulldog defense is having some fun out they there. They sure are. And they're up 28 to nothing here. They can do just about anything they want. Under 16 seconds remaining in the first. I did hear a whistle before the snap. Don't see a flag. Do you see a flag anywhere? No, I just heard the whistle. I did too. Did someone call a quick timeout? Yep, it looks like Orange Coast used its first timeout of the first half right before the snap. We will take a timeout as well with 13.3 seconds remaining in the first. It's 28-0, Bulldogs with the lead. You're listening to Bulldog Football at ahcbulldogs.com. Welcome back to Allen Hancock College. First game of the 2023 campaign for your Bulldogs under new head coach Rick Aguilar. And the Bulldogs lead it 28-0. Orange Coast with the ball. And a first and five. First, first down of the game for Orange, Orange Coast with a complete pass to Blake Willie, the sophomore wide receiver out of Moline High School in Illinois. That's got to be a relief for the Pirates offense and the end of the first quarter with the Bulldogs leading at 28 nothing we will take a quick time out you're listening to Bulldog football at athletics excuse me not it that's old that's the old website it's a h c Bulldogs Welcome back to Allen Hancock College. Your Bulldogs leading at 28 nothing after one quarter of play. CJ Silas and Greg Pensa joining you with your play-by-play. -play. We appreciate you being here on the webcast all over the United States, American Samoa, and the Hawaiian Islands. Sending our love to all those in Maui that were affected by the fires. And Greg's got the first half, first quarter Ooh. statistics. But before we get to that, it's a first down. And it's a complete pass to Trevor Thomas for Bubba Gonzalez and the Orange Coast Pirates offense. So real quickly, Pirates, or I mean Bulldogs, 126 yards of offense on 15 plays. Um, 10 of rushes for 59 yards, 4 of 5 on passing. So Pirates uh, on the short end of a 28 to nothing score here because it's been all... Bulldog defense. I want to hear a little more of the first quarter stats. Let's get back to this. First and 10 from the 41. And Ayers trips up a bit, almost falls, almost gets tackled, Ooh. and then runs into a big hit at the 40 Ooh. and is pushed out of bounds. But the thing about him, 6'2", 205, he wasn't afraid to get hit. Well, he got stood straight up there, and it took a heavy hit. Twice. Oh, that was a Oh, yeah, he, he definitely stood up for himself in that position. It was a head-on collision for sure. A gain of four on the play for the Pirates. Ayers 
the sophomore of the two quarterbacks working today under Gonzalez's offensive plan, along with JT Nuimata, the offensive coordinator. Mendoza, the ball carrier, the freshman, at a Segerstrom High School in Santa Ana. Well, Orange Coast only had 22 yards of offense in that first quarter on 16 plays. Wow. Well, that was obvious. <laughs> it sort of shows up on the scoreboard, it too. It sure does. The third and three now for the Pirates with their best field position of the game so far at the Bulldog 34. Mendoza in the backfield with Ayers. Two wide receivers on the far side. This time a pass play. Looking downfield. Oh. And it's a rolling touchdown for Caden Baptista. A 34-yard touchdown catch. That was a great pass by Ayers. He got it right in the hands of Batista. And it, Batista had the inside position on the uh, Bulldog defender. And it was a nice throw. I was just going to say, Orange Coast has got to open up their offense. They're down 28 nothing. You can't. You, you mentioned that. that in the first quarter. You hadn't seen much passing, unfortunately, for that one interception by the Bulldogs. But now that Ayers is passing, they're moving the ball a little bit better. Leo Ogawa coming in for the extra point. Orange Coast first score of the game. The 38 yard touchdown catch by Baptista. Kick is up and it's good. It's now 28-7. Bulldogs with the lead just starting the second quarter. You're listening to Bulldog Football at ahcbulldogs.com. First score on the board with 13-11 remaining in the first half. A 38-yard touchdown catch by Caden Baptista and the extra point by Leo Ogawa. And now getting set to kick off is Ogawa. Back at the five-yard line, Tyrell Darby. Let's it bounce into the end zone. Darby, a wide receiver, freshman out of Bishop McGinnis High School, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. It'll be a touchback for the Bulldogs. Curious to see what Coach Aguilar and Robbie Fukuhara decide to do when the defense gets back on the field, as well as Chris Dutra with a 21-point lead this early in the game. Learning a lot about all the players, Greg. Well, it's... Uh Orange Coast, you know, their offense, 22 yards in the first quarter. I mean, on 16 plays, that's not even a yard a play. I mean, that's crazy. First and 10 from the 25. Ooh. And what a hole. John Allen running as fast as he can downfield, and he gets grabbed in the back inside the 10-yard line. Sixty plus yards on the run by John Allen. He got grabbed on his back. Sometimes when they grab him on the back like that by the jersey, it makes me a little nervous. Like, I, I mean, it feels like it's almost a horse collar, and it seems dangerous. But there's no penalty on the play, and I am not an official. I am far from that. <laughs> the sixty-nine yard run. And it's first and goal for the Bulldogs. This time, Busby with the ball on the first and goal. He's tackled at the five, maybe a gain of one yard. What a run by John Allen, the sophomore. 
Well, you got to give Orange Coast credit. They're down by three scores, and they didn't give up. He had about a 10-yard uh, lead on everybody, but Allen ran out a little, bit, a little bit out of gas there towards about the 10-yard line. I'm glad you said that. I noticed it, and I wasn't sure, was he celebrating ahead of time, or was he actually running out of gas? Yeah, yeah maybe he was running out of It is the first game of the year. Two-yard gain on the play on the run by Busby. This time it's Allen again. Allen goes to the left, maybe a gain of two. Nice play by about five Pirates. Well, they're giving Allen a 69-yard run on that, CJ. Yep. So. Now it's a third and goal from the two. Busby's in the backfield. Ooh. <laughs> and Vele gives it to Busby. Vele's the new quarterback. He's in. I'm waiting for an official. I haven't seen an official throw their arms up. I've only, and there is one. It's a touchdown. He's the short official on yes, the other I side see, of the field. I see the <laughs> official on the far side with the black hat. <laughs> and now it looks like there's a little bit of talk. We're not sure. Did Busby get in or not? And... It is a touchdown for Ferrari Busby, a three-yard touchdown. And A.J. Vele, the freshman quarterback, was in under center for the Bulldogs. Well, Busby's second TD of the day. And he ran into a wall of Orange Coast players, and he sort of spun to his left and, with that leg drive, got in for the score. Acosta's kick is up, and it's good. 35 to seven with the Bulldogs in the lead. 11-19 remaining in the first half. You're listening to Bulldog Football at ahcbulldogs.com. Welcome back to Allen Hancock College after the Busby three-yard touchdown run. You can see Coach Joe Parker wanting to talk to his team on the sideline and is proud of his team but wants to keep them to keep their head in the game. Got the entire offensive line huddled around the sideline at the bench having a conversation. And it's a fair catch for Orange Coast. With 11-19 remaining in the first half, they will take over on their own 30-yard line. Well, we saw Orange Coast open up their offense a little bit. Their heirs who threw last year for nine touchdowns threw a beautiful pass right into the receiver of Orange Coast. Just had to step into the end zone. Looks like Congleton is back as the quarterback. And it's a co complete pass to Bronson Bailey's, the sophomore. The tight end, a three-yard gain on that catch. Well, Conklin's going to have to do a three-step drop, CJ, because he's not going to have any time to sit down there and peruse the field. The D-line's tough today for the Bulldogs. And Bulldogs have been showing a blitz occasionally, so they've been mixing up the defense quite well here in this first half so far. Second and seven. Congleton looking for someone, can't find anyone. He keeps it himself, dives over the 40, and it looks like it might be enough for a pirate first down. Pretty close it is. It's a pirate first down on the Congleton run. Couldn't find anyone downfield, knew he was in trouble, ran towards the near hash mark, and found his way for a pirate first down. Well, they only had one first down in the first quarter, so... I think that's maybe their third so far. Ball's on the 43. Congleton 
in the shotgun, clapping to his line of scrimmage. Looking to pass again. This time it's a short little shovel forward to Corrigan. And Corrigan gets almost to near field, to the middle field. At the 49-yard line. Isaac Fagata making that stop, CJ. So. Fa Agata is the sophomore out of McKay High School in Tacoma, Washington. 6'1", 290. Wow. Still has a little speed with that size. Second and four. Oh. And it looks like uh, it's offsides it's against uh, illegal motion. Yes. Legal motion against the Pirates, a five yard penalty. They'll move back from a second and four. It'll turn into a second and nine, pretty much taking away what Corrigan just got. Wide receiver didn't know what to count and took a step a little early. Well, CJ, I thought when I was driving up here, there's going to be some rain. It's overcast, yep. but it's really sort of humid today. It's perfect football weather in Santa Maria. No wind. No wind. I was warning coach of the wind, too, Gonzalez, yesterday when I was talking to him on the phone while he was still down in Southern California. So far, it's early. Second and nine. Congleton wants to run. He gets cross midfield, and he dives. There's no one around him, but he dives at the 47 into Bulldog territory. I'm not sure if it was enough for a first down. His knees might, yep, I don't think so. His knees hit, he dove, but he, his legs went down. Fuagata got him right about the ankles. That's why he sort of tripped forward, yep. CJ. Otherwise, he would have had the first down. So good second effort there by Fuagata. You're to coming from behind. It's a third and long one. Congleton in the backfield with Corrigan. Corrigan, the ball carrier, bumps into one of his own players, and then he's tackled by Aaron Small Jr. A good second effort there for the first down. It is a first down, but it was a nice hit by Small Jr., the sophomore. P.K. Young High School in Gainesville, Florida. Just under eight minutes to play here in the first half. The second quarter a little more competitive than it was in the first quarter on both sides of the ball. Pirates have made some adjustments. First and 10. Ooh. A quick pass is. It's it's, to go. Yep, there he is. Faagata, the sophomore Isaac Faagata is all over the defensive plays right now. On this set of downs, he's everywhere. Well, he's coming off his set position and curling in, so he's sealing that outside position for a run. So he, he's gotten fired up here in the second quarter. He's been all over the place. Back to the original line of scrimmage, second and 10. Congleton wants a pass. He's in trouble. Scurrying to the right side, can't find anyone, decides to run and takes himself out of bounds right around the 41-yard line for a gain of four or five. He didn't see anyone open. The defensive backs for the Bulldogs really covering those wide receivers nicely right now defensively for Hancock. Well, that plus the pressure that, uh, yes. that they're applying. The D-line, yep. <laughs> he can't get to that secondary receiver. He doesn't have a pocket. He just starts moving right away. Third and six. No more, to, again, quickly, he's sacked. Just like that, and his, his helmet's off, so he's gonna have to take a down off for the next play. So we are gonna see Congleton leave the field, and Ayers is gonna have to come back in. It's a junior college, it's a, it's a rule. You lose your helmet, you, you have to miss a down. And it's a fourth and long after a loss. Not much movement offensively at all for the Pirates on this set of downs. No. Makai Puga back for the Bulldogs at the 10.
Ogawa gets the punt up. That's a nice punt. It's a fair catch called for at the 16. A lot of pressure again applied by the Bulldogs as they had three men breaking through there. And it's lucky to get that punt off, not get it blocked again. This team's pretty fired up for the Bulldogs. I've seen a lot of first games of the season. This is my 12th year doing Bulldog football. And conference or no conference, sometimes they do come sluggish out of the gate. First game of the year. But this team fired up from first time that ball went in the air on that kickoff to start the game. And nice they, to see it. And they had no scrimmage this year. They had to cancel yep, the scrimmage. Yep, they had so. a blue and gold real early. But nothing against El Camino on the road or canyons. First and 10 from the, their own 16. Isaiah Airline, wearing a new number eight this year, the sophomore. Well, another huge hole there, CJ. Offensive line for the Bulldogs has just been opening some gaping gaps there. Nathaniel Lykin makes the tackle, the sophomore, one of the defensive leaders for the Pirates, the sophomore out of West Anchorage High School in Anchorage, Alaska. Nice run, a gain of eight. This one, a pitch back to Upo'u. And it looks like it's a Bulldog first down. The one thing to Upo'u with a nice run on the play using his size. Well, Bulldogs mixing up their running backs here. They're seeing the a little action with a big lead that gives an opportunity to maybe uh, test a few other players, see what they can do. So It's the way they do it here with Hancock offense, always spending the first couple games of the year trying to figure out which running backs, which halfbacks they're going to use for a conference season. This time, it's Luketu. And Luketu with a nice run. It's always nice on that first down to get an good amount of yardage to take a little pressure off the offense, and that was a nine-yard run for the sophomore. Well, the Bulldogs ran for 59 yards in that first quarter of their 126 yards of offense, but uh, a couple of key defensive plays have really set up two scores for the Bulldogs. Just under five minutes to go, second and one. And Vele is the quarterback in for the Bulldogs. A.J. Vele, the freshman out of Santa Barbara, right down the road, Bishop Diego High School. And it's a first down for the Bulldogs. Bishop Diego is sort of the equivalent of St. Joe in Santa Barbara. Had a very successful football uh, seasons about the last 10, 15 years, so. Ball's on the 42 for another first down for Hancock, leading at 35 to 7. They lay under center. There's a flag. There's one Bulldog that's wearing gold sneakers, and I, I have to make sure I'm, I'm not looking at the sneakers when I see a flag. <laughs> the other team has one too, yep. Penalty against the Bulldogs offense. Makes it a first and 15 now from the 37. Well, Makai Stat, that's the gentleman with the gold football shoes for the Bulldogs. Tupou in the backfield. And he's got the ball. Goes to the left. Only gains a couple yards on the play. Got a nice block in there. I think it was A.J. Masunu lined up as a halfback. Well, it's interesting the Bulldogs run a traditional I formation sometimes. Sometimes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you don't see that anymore. We see a lot of fun stuff here. Never know what to expect. Second and 12. Time. Lefty. Valet. And it's caught inside the 20 by Collins Petaway. Collins Petaway. 
a 60-yard touchdown catch, but also a little taunting. Yeah, he uh, gave a little bye-bye to the defensive guy. And the defensive player for Orange Coast didn't like it and gave him a little extra shove at the end of the play. It's, it may not be a touchdown. They're probably going to call it all the way back. You can call it all the way back on taunting? Let's see what they say. Let's see. Let's see. Or are they going to take it to the spot of the foul? Well, usually they... Here we go. It's a 15-yard penalty. They're bringing it back. 15-yard penalty from the same spot. Now they're mo but now they're moving the six the other way. There's confusion. All the all the players were going down to the original line of scrimmage for the 15-yard penalty, but instead, it's where the taunting happened, and then 15 yards from that back. There we go. Now we know. Usually, you hope not to see too much taunting. So you know I know. What I mean? uh, typically, that's assessed on the kickoff. I didn't know that. Uh, maybe. Well, it came before, Community. but if it came after the touchdown, yes. But because it became, it happened before the touchdown. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, he gave him a little bye-bye at a, about the five-yard line. Pretty sure he's going to do some extra running this week. Well, it took away a touchdown, too. That's the real penalty. Yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot of penalty in that. <laughs> First and 10 now for the Bulldogs on the 18. And Tupou, the ball carrier. Oh, who uh, almost fumbled that ball, CJ. Well, that's a break for Orange Coast, and the Orange Coast player that was taunted against <laughs> got to shove that away to the turf afterwards in the end zone. No penalty there, but uh, a lesson to be learned. There are 18, 19 year old kids yes. out there. Belay, Ooh. another pass play, looking for Alex Sutton. A that was a bullet with a left, lefty. I like lefties because I'm a lefty. Okay. Uh, 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 uh. A little behind Sutton. Sutton yes, turned yes. around and he couldn't quite reach back far enough to uh, catch the pass. All league returning player for the Bulldogs, Sutton. So Wearing a new number. Guess th I guess they don't fight over numbers. Usually, if you're the sophomore, you should get whatever number you want. So maybe he wanted number 10. Because I think Alex Sutton wore 30 last year. Third and six. Clock was running down there. CK. Timeout for the Bulldogs. Their second timeout of the first half. We'll take a timeout as well. With 2.17 remaining in the second quarter. Bulldogs lead at 35-7. You're listening to Bulldog Football at AHC Bulldogs. Dot com. Welcome back to Allen Hancock College. Bulldogs lead at 35 to 7 with 2 minutes 17 seconds remaining in the second quarter. Bulldogs just used their second touch uh, timeout of the first half. There is a flag on the play. Luketsu, the ball carrier. Well, that's usually in the spot you get holding, CJ, and he had nowhere to go. See what the call is. Against the Bulldogs. Like they're walking backwards. I think uh, Orange Coast is deciding whether to take the penalty or not. Yep. Holding against the Bulldogs. So instead of a third and six, it'll be a third and 16. 
after the penalty against Sutton, the holding. I think you'd want to take the penalty in that situation and make it fourth down. You're giving Bulldogs another chance here to get a score. I don't know what Acosta's legs like, but. Uh, Third and 16. Valet under center backs in the eye. He wants to pass. He's got some time. Oh. Looking for Joey Garza, and it's batted down. Batted down by the Pirates. Mason, oh, Johnny Bagdani. Johnny Brigdani. Brigondi. Brigondi. He is one of the kids that uh, Coach Gonzalez was talking to me about yesterday about being one of the defensive leaders. Johnny Brigandi from Newport Harbor High School, the sophomore. Oh. Batted down the ball. And now it's a fourth and 16. Acosta's coming in to try for a field goal. Kick is up, it's got the distance, and it's good. Oh, wow. Three more points on the board for the Bulldogs. Is that a 37 yard field goal? 38 7, Bulldogs with the lead. You're listening to Bulldog Football at AHCBulldogs.com. Welcome back to Allen Hancock College. A 42-yard field goal by Aroth Acosta. Busy kicker today. Getting all the action. Field goals, extra points, punts, and kickoffs. Ball. Looks like there's a fumble. And Ooh. Logan Hancock was on the return. And he fumbled it, but then he jumped on it to try to recover it. Well, and the ball was definitely on the ground there. Yes. There was a little arm wrestling going on, but uh, he was able to pull it back in. He, I think it was actually a shared possession, so they, especially with the score 38-7, to seven, they don't want to give the Bulldogs another first down inside the 30 here. So. Orange Coast, with only a minute 36 remaining in the first half to get something going offensively. It's a handoff to Dominic Carver. Well, I think Orange Coast is going to be looking forward to halftime here, CJ, after the beating they've taken here in this first half. Coach Aguilar in his first game here at Hancock as the head coach, longtime assistant here for the Bulldogs. And so. Pretty proud of his defense, especially for his first half as the head coach. The helm of Allen Hancock College football. A longtime family member. He told me that even sometimes he'd be away watching a Dodger game or one of his kids' softball games watching Bulldogs football last season. <laughs> he was into it. Went here. His father went here. He was an assistant coach. And you notice the legacy of Bulldog football here in this region. There is a commitment. Players, coaches, they stick around. They become assistant coaches. They work in the high school areas at the Lompocs and the Cabrillos and St. Joe's, Santa Maria, Rigetti. San Inez. San Inez. Well, high school football is still a big deal here in the Central Coast for sure. Luckily, I'm busy on Fridays. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> People are very serious. On my radio show, Greg, whenever I, in the past, have mentioned anything about high school football, I've gotten just reamed by whatever I say. So about eight years ago, I professed to never speak about high school football again on my show because I wasn't willing to deal with the parents. Ooh. It's a fun sport. That Friday night is an exciting time at those stadiums. But 
it is a tough, tough thing to talk about because everybody is very sensitive, and it's a, every parent thinks their kid's an Olympian. But it makes it fun, the passion, especially when you don't have big-time college football or an NFL team around. Well, I can tell you a few stories about comments on yes, yeah, see, plays. see, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> don't act like you don't. <laughs> Thirty-eight to seven, Bulldogs with the lead, under them. Thirty seconds to go in the first half. It's a third and four for the visiting Pirates of Orange Coast. First time here playing the Bulldogs in football. Congleton with a handoff. Looks like the team will probably let the clock tick all the way down to zero, and the first half of play is in the books. We will come back in halftime. We'll bring you the first half statistics. It looks like, wait, they might keep the teams on the field. Hold on. Don't get too excited, Greg. Yeah, it's not time for your tri-tip. <laughs> you can't end the half on a penalty. Oh, there we go. Six seconds back on the clock. We're going to have one more play. For Orange Coast, it's going to be a fourth and four from their own 33. I think Coach Aguilar called a timeout there before they let oh. the clock run out. So, But they're, it doesn't look they haven't taken the third timeout off the board yet. Let's see. They're trying to figure something out. What's going on on the field? Well, it looks like there's going to be a punt. Six seconds left on the clock. Still, there's still a timeout on the Hancock side of the scoreboard. And, and they didn't huddle up, so I don't think it was a timeout. A little confusion, but we'll let it go. It's going to be a fake punt. Oh, it's a pooch punt. Look at that. Caden Baptista, as I said, Coach Gonzalez told us before the game that this kid is going to do about everything. And that time, he stood in for the punter with a pooch punt. He does... Running back on special teams, he's a wide receiver, and now we will officially head to halftime. We will come back with your first half statistics. We appreciate you being here for the first game of the Allen Hancock College Football 2023 campaign. Your Bulldogs lead it 38-7 to for Greg Pence. I'm C.J. Silas. You are listening to Bulldog Football at ahcbulldogs.com.
Welcome back to Allen Hancock College on the campus of Allen Hancock College on the campus where the Bulldogs of Allen Hancock College play football. And the first half of football is in the books. Game one of the 2023 season, Bulldogs leading the Pirates of Orange Coast College 38 to seven. The first quarter, all Bulldogs. Second quarter, it looked like Orange Coast switched up their offensive plans a little bit to improve and score their first touchdown. Greg, do you have the stats for me? The hot off the press from Tony at Orange Coast College. Well, it was all Bulldogs is reflected on the scoreboard and in the halftime stats. Bulldogs ran 28 plays for 290 yards. So that's 10, over 10 yards per play for the Bulldogs. 166 yards rushing, 124 passing versus only 110 yards of total offense for Orange Coast Pirates on 31 plays, 22 yards only in the first quarter. So Bulldogs jumped out to 28 nothing lead. Highlights defensively for the Pirates, they had one interception by Ardarius Odom, returned 56 yards for a touchdown. Uh, defensively, they had a blocked punt by Trent Kimball that set up another touchdown, and they had four tackles for losses in the first half and two sacks. So defensively, Coach Aguilar, he's a defensive guy. He's got to be very happy with these stats. And the Pir uh, Pirates uh, got hit by a Bulldog tidal wave there at the beginning of this game. As, as you mentioned many times, Bulldogs were ready to play, and they are happy to be here at, uh, on the campus of Hancock College to play football today on this sort of overcast day. But a uh, no wind at all, which is surprising. It's picking up right now. Did you just throw in a bulldog landslide? Volcano? What was it? Tsunami? <laughs> Wait. <laughs> tidal wave. Tidal wave. That's what it was. Yeah, the bulldogs came out of the blocks. High energy. A lot more fresh than we've seen in the last few years. Uh, no judgment on the past teams. Just a testament to what... Coach Aguilar with offensive coordinator and associate head coach Chris Dutra and defensive coordinator Robbie Fukuhara have instilled in this team and they were fired up on both sides of the ball and you see it on the scoreboard. 38-7 Bulldogs with the lead. And after winning the coin toss, deferring to the second half, the Bulldogs will receive the kick and get us underway. So that sound you hear, I always like to tell people what that is because you have no idea what that sound is. But there is the offensive coaches. We don't have an official press box here with rooms and beautiful. <laughs> and a set up for a lunch. But instead, it's kind of like a beeping catwalk that gets pushed up into the air. And they're actually higher than us, the coaches. And that's the beeping that you hear in the background. He is Greg Pensa, and I am CJ Silas bringing you Bulldog football here 2023. Bulldogs with the lead. And they will receive the kick. It'll be Tyrell Darby. He's back inside the five, gets it around the three, gets to the 10, 15, 20, still moving at the 25 to the 30, and takes a hit right past the 35 yard line. Nice run back from the kid out of Bishop McGinnis High School. The freshman out of Oklahoma City. Well, it's always amazing to me, CJ, looking at the roster for the Bulldogs, where all these players come from. And the biggest place that they come from besides California is American Samoa. Twelve players on this roster from American Samoa. And if you, if you look at the team, they've got two countries represented. And I think it's 12 states in the United States represented on the Bulldog roster. First and 10 for the dogs from their own 35. And there's a flag on the play and it looks like one of the defenders from Orange Coast pulled off Joey Garza's helmet. <laughs> and there was a flag thrown a little late after the play. They're calling it a personal foul. He, it, he knew he did it too. Well, that carries with it an automatic first down, and it's going to bring the ball all the way into Orange Coast territory at the 49-yard line of the Pirates. 
I hope I didn't miss it, but I might have. Penalties in the first half, did you mention them? No. Okay, then I was listening. I was half listening, like, like I remember my parents to me when I would come home and talk. But the penalties have been a problem for most teams at this level, first game of the year, but it was a pretty clean first half. First and 10 from the Pirate 49. Okay, penalties. Hancock had eight penalties for 55 yards. Orange Coast, four for 20 yards. Eight's a lot. Yes. I did a game last night, and they had 29 penalties between the two teams. It was horrible. Yes. Because the clock stops. Yes. It does make it for a marathon. Five-yard gain on the play, second and five. This time it's Busby. Busby's looking to the right, has nowhere. And it's tackled by Nathaniel Lycan, which is one of those players that Coach Gonzalez from the Pirates expects to show up defensively on every single play. Gain of two. Interesting, September turned two days ago and it's almost as if the weather followed perfectly. The breeze did pick up here in the second half and Allen the carrier, and he's dropped by Near, Joseph Near. Well, CJ, I think he's gonna be a little bit a shorty. Little short, yep, short of the first down. Nice tackle by the Orange Coast player, got him around the ankles, he tried to dive forward. So decision time for Coach Aguilar here. Looks like he? he's going for it because Busby just came in. Well, he might try to do the hard count and have Orange Coast jump off sides. Doesn't look like it. Nope. There's a fumble. Oh, it looks they, like Orange Coast got it right around the 42-yard line. Orange Coast. Orange Coast recovers the fumble. It was Miguel Berrios. Heads up play by the Pirate defender, and they'll take over on the turnover. First turnover by the Bulldogs today. The uh, exchange right? on the handoff there was not very, you're correct, no turnovers in the first half. But I don't think it would have made any difference anyway, even if he would have handed the ball off. because It was a fourth down. Yeah. First and 10 Pirates from their own 42. Here's the quarterback. Oh no, it's Congleton actually. Congleton starting this second half. Well, Trent Kimball breaking that pass up. He's the one that made the block on the punt earlier in this game. So Kimball, good job on defense there. Second and 10 for Orange Coast. See if have they make any changes strategically after the first half. And Congleton starting the first, the second mm -hmm. half is, is part of it. And he makes a complete pass to Baptista and he gets a pirate first down. Well that time Congleton rolling out of the, the pocket, uh, reading about Orange Coast, they said that he was a pocket passer, but today, <laughs> He has not been able to stay no in choice, the pocket. No choice, no <laughs> choice. Yeah. No time. So he bought a little time and found his receiver and got a first down. First and 10 from the Bulldog 45. Orange Coast better success offensively to open up this half than the first half. This time it's an incomplete pass intended for Royster. Darian, Darren Lewis putting some pressure on Congleton that time. He had to get the ball away a little quicker than he wanted to. Bulldogs have been able to disrupt the passing game quite a bit here in this first half or in this ball game. <clears throat> it's 
Second and 10, Congleton in the shotgun. Got a slot back. It's Mendoza. Ooh. He gives it to him, and Mendoza's got nowhere to go. Running into three different Bulldogs. Brody Tucker being one of them. Yeah, he led the charge there. Tucker, 6'1", 275. That's a load. So... He's a sophomore, one of the leaders on the D-line. 6'1", as you said, Queen Creek, Arizona. Hmm. Another state represented on the Bulldog squad. Third and 10. Fox yelling at the Pirates line of scrimmage. Congleton has a little Ooh. time, not much, Ooh. and he's sacked. Wow, he just got him right around the ankles, just enough to take him down. I think. Looks like it was Reynold UT. Utah a T. Let's find out. We're gonna. I'm gonna find out how. To, I think it's UT. It's I'm gonna UTI. Get it right. UT it. I'm gonna get it right because I'm respectful because my mother would be proud. You don't want to get a phone call after the game. No, nobody has my number. I I, I was smart about that 11 years ago. Nobody knows how to find me. I'm incognito. CJ Silas is not even my real name. He lets the ball roll to the 10 yard line. The Bulldogs will take over. Orange Coast employing that sort of rugby type punt. And the last time uh, Kimball was able to block it. And it, usually they try and do that because it buys a little more time for their, the defense to cover the kicks. And that time it worked. Uh, the Bulldogs unable to return that punt. We're going with Uti. Uti? Okay. Yep, that's what we're using today. If it's wrong, someone will tell me. You can ask uh, Athletic Director Insing, though. He knows all their names. First and 10, Bulldogs from their own 13, and it's Clavel. Three-yard gain on the play. Ooh. I heard a hit, but it was a complete pass to Maximo Soltero. How long ago was that Soltero touchdown in the first quarter. <laughs> that was how it all started. It was six yards. It was a six-yard touchdown catch. I that think was that ball was actually tipped, CJ. Just now, yes. And uh, he did a good job of coming back to catch yep. it. It was he, nearly an interception. Yep, he held on to it, too, because there was a hit right there. There was a defender just literally on his back. In a split second, that could have been a disaster. Third and three. Another pass play. This one is complete to Sutton. And Sutton with a Bulldog first down. What a run after the catch. Well, Sutton lowered his shoulder Oof. and really leveled the defensive player for Orange Coast. So Sutton all league last year. So uh, he's showing why he was all selected all league. He's looking all league on the couple plays he's had this afternoon. 19 yards for the sophomore out of Orchid Academy locally here in Santa Maria. First and 10 from the 40. Bulldogs with a 31 point lead. Oop. And there's a fumble that the quarterback Clavel recovers. Well, Clavel didn't really secure that in his hands. He was sort of looking up. I think it was going to be a pass play and the ball ended up on the turf. Lost two yards on the play, but he kept the football. That's mo most important. Not turning it over this far deep into their own territory, giving Orange Coast a chance. Instead, Clavel recovers it. And it's two, second and 12. Another run play. This is Busby finds a hole. 
and dives across the 45. What an effort by the sophomore Busby. Seven yard gain. He found a hole and dove right through it and did a couple somersaults. Well, the wind starting to come up here a little bit, CJ. The flag had been right against the You jinxed it because it wasn't windy until you said, it's not windy. It's all your fault. Third and five. <laughs> Duquetu, the ball carrier, didn't get much. Actually lost a few, down, a few yards, and now it's going to be a... Lost four yards on the play, fourth and nine. And here comes Aroth Acosta. That is a busy foot for the sophomore out of Pioneer Valley High School, 6'1", 215. He has taken charge of all kicking and punting duties for the Bulldogs today. He's the only guy I have on my depth chart. Lots of confidence in the sophomore. Baptista back at the 22. He fields it at the 20. Runs to the Ooh. hash mark, and then he's tackled quickly. Well, Acosta kicked the ball off seven times in that first half, so he has been a busy boy. Tyrell Darby with a nice tackle. Baptista down. And here come the Pirates again. With 6.15 remaining in the second, the third quarter. Down 31. No offensive production for either team thus far. Oh, and it's an interception. interception. Bulldogs, what a catch. Interception by Sean Pua. Well, a second interception of the afternoon. For the Bulldogs, and Pua read that play from the get-go. He just stepped in the lane, and fortunately for Orange Coast, he didn't return it for a touchdown. But Keyshawn Pua, I'm pretty sure he's the son of uh, Sandy Pua, who passed away recently, part of the Bulldog family, the whole Pua family for years. They even drive around a car that says Pua family on their license plates. I, I see it often when I'm out and about with around town representing the Pua family, the sophomore linebacker. And now the Bulldogs take over. Allen gets tackled with probably no gain at all. Uh, I think he picked up a couple Maybe. actually. Oh, yep, he did. Sometimes the forward progress happens and then the defender pushes him back and it's already done. Well, he ran into a cluster of yes. <laughs> players there, so it was sort of. It was a cluster. Yes, it was. Second and eight. Mm. Got a complete pass to Luketu. Is it Luketu? Who is that? No, 49. it's not. That was Brian Ibarra. Brian Ibarra, first time we say his name today. Brian Ibarra, a fullback out of Paso Robles High School in the north part of San Luis Obispo County, a freshman, gets his first action of the season. This is that time, those first couple games of the year, we're going to see it just about everyone play. They'll solidify those starters. Ooh. It's Allen right into the end zone for a seven-yard touchdown run. John Allen. Well, that turnover meant a lot for this Bulldog football team. The interception and a touchdown capitalizing on the turnover. Well, Allen had that nice 69 yard run but he didn't get quite into the end zone so that's a little payback for him Acosta on to 
by the extra point. And it's good. <laughs> 45 to 7, Bulldogs with the lead. 456 remaining in the third quarter. You're listening to Bulldog Football at Athletics. No, at ahcbulldogs.com, of course. Welcome back to Allen Hancock College, 45 to seven after the John Allen seven Ooh. yard touchdown. It's fumbled at the 34 yard line and the Bulldogs are celebrating. 31. Jaden Matthews with the fumble recovery on special teams. He's a freshman out of Booker T. Washington High School in Houston, Texas, Texas and the Bulldogs one more turnover. Wow. So we've had a block punt, two interceptions, and now a fumble on a kickoff return. So Orange Coast a little loose with the ball today. I'm glad you're keeping track. That is your job. Thank you, color commentator, for doing exactly what I need you to do. You get an A for that. Thank you, Greg. Well, you're welcome. First and 10. Clavel. Has a little time, but oh. no, it Ooh. looks like he almost fumbled it, but he gets sacked at the 44-yard line. Yeah, he tried to stretch forward, and that ball was out in front of him. You're right, he almost lost it. And he was but smart to pull it back in. Now, Lou Wa'ahe, Lou, the defensive lineman, almost got the ball loose, but... Gets credited for the sack. A loss of 12 yards. Second and long. Lavelle gives it to Luketu, and he runs into two defenders. He had a little trouble when he ran into Malik Pryor. Well, just nowhere to go on that play. A little slow developing, and Orange Coast uh, defense is a little more fired up here. I think they're mad. The a lot of things, a lot of things. <laughs> Threw 38 they're, points up yeah, on them in the first half. Yeah, they're down 45-7. The fact that they're keeping their cool is pretty impressive. It's a pitch. Ooh. A pitch play to to Upo'u. No. Garza. Yes. Oh, you're right. Penalty at the end of the play here, and I'm not sure. Usually that's where you get that illegal block. A personal foul after the play against the Pirates. It'll be 15 yards and a first down for the Bulldogs. So from the 33, they'll now move all the way down to the 18, around the 18. Well, that's insult to injury there after that nice run by, Gar or by the Bulldogs. And then to add another 15 yards, that's about a 30-yard gain for Hancock. Automatic first down, Bulldogs. Once again, deep in Orange Coast territory, already leading by 38 with under three minutes to go in the third quarter. Oh. And it's up in the air and it's caught into the end zone. Touchdown, Tyrell Darby. Well, a nice little fade pattern that time.
Darby was all alone in the northern corner of the end zone. Nice the jump, too. He, he had some vertical. Darby, oh. the freshman, he's only 5'10", but he jumped up to about 6'2", 6 6'4", 6 out of Bishop McGinnis High School in Oklahoma. Well, that play is just how you draw it up. It was a fade pattern, and Darby had to jump a little bit to catch it. As the wind has come up, I'm, I'm sorry that I mentioned it, and it's <laughs> picking up a little more as we go along here. I'm so glad you're taking credit for jinxing us, because that's what we do at Bulldog Football. We always blame the jinx on someone. It's the not new guy? You. No, it's always one of us. Irvin, Brian, you, Ernesto, anybody that's done uh, football with me. Well, the one thing, CJ, I <laughs> was on the Hancock baseball team. I didn't play much. But this is where the baseball field used to be. Oh, wow. You you know what? You continue to age yourself. I'm sorry to say. <laughs> so when John Osborne was our coach. Yeah, John Osborne was your coach. You're really aging yourself. That was over 22 years ago. Oh, yeah. Well, so. Oh, gee. It's okay. We like seniors here. You get the discount and special parking. Right. Well, I get that anyway. That's what you get when you get to be a trustee. Oh, right. You're a trustee. Oh, my gosh. Am I being disrespectful to a trustee? He says when he gets here. I'm if Kevin, you get a I'm, paycheck, I sign it. So I'm Kevin remember Walther's that. I'm boss. I'm like, oh, are you, pulling a, are you pulling some rank on me right now? Oh, no. I just like to it's remind okay. Kevin once in a while. Oh, gee. Men like to do that to each other. Women, we don't do that. We're just happy somebody's got the promotion. 250 remaining in the third, 51 to 7 right now. And Acosta, here he is again with another extra point attempt. It's up. And it's good. You do the math, a field goal and seven point afters for Aroth Acosta. He's going to need some ice on that foot. Yeah. He's and gonna... the punts and the kickoffs. Let's do the math on that. Well, he's had seven kickoffs. <laughs> seven, ki seven kickoffs from foot and a kickoff to open up the first quarter. A couple punts, a field goal. Woo! He's An over, extra point. Yeah, he's almost, 20, he's almost 20 in. Nice work. I need a statistician to be counting in unimportant stats for me to throw out because why not? Because I can. 52 to seven, we're gonna stick around here as the third quarter continues here he is again. It's eighth kickoff, ninth, because he had a field goal kickoff, seven touchdowns, and the opening to the game. It's fielded at the 28. A, a little bit of extracurricular going on at the 40-yard line. It looked like it was mutual, but who's going to get in trouble for that? It was an admiration on both white jersey and blue. Did I hear the whistle blown? It sounded like the whistle blew uh, just as the ball was kicked. Yes. Okay, so there were two whistles. There was the whistle, the early whistle that probably stopped the play from even starting, and then the after-the-play whistle with the extra stuff going on between the players because one of the Bulldog players threw down a Pirates player, but I wasn't down there to see what happened first or what was said, and I'm glad. Well, you have to hand it to Orange Coast being beaten up here this afternoon 52 to 7 they've really uh, held their cool at a, f a few times today they sure have but uh, they've got an experienced coach and this Bubba. one was against the bulldogs 15 yards unsportsmanlike conduct and that moves it to the 47 Orange Coast, back on offense. Let's see if it's Congleton or Ayers. I think it's Ayers. He's number six, right? Yes. Ayers. Right away. Gives the ball to Carver. Carver's a freshman out of Grand Junction, Colorado, Grand Junction High School. Did you see that Deion Sanders and the Colorado Buffaloes won their football game? Is like I think they were like an 18-point underdog against TCU. It's kind of fun. Yeah, next weekend it really kicks off, so it'll be interesting to see how he does there. I think he's going to do great. 
That's what college football needs, a little extra energy. Second and eight. This time he gives it to Carver again. Carver finds a little hole, not enough for a first down to the right side of the tackles. Well, Carver was starting to move a little towards that first down and Nolan Oslin came up and pushed him back. Otherwise he would have probably continued down the field. Third and three. This time it's Trotola. Trotola, Jackson Trotola, sophomore. Woodbridge High School in Irvine, California. Sophomore, we thought we'd see quite a bit of him today. Well, he's very near Orange Coast because they're down in Costa Mesa. So, timeout taken by Orange Coast here. Orange Coast taking its first timeout of the second half with 107 remaining in the third. It's Bulldogs 52, the Pirates 7. You're listening to Bulldog Football at AHC Bulldogs. Welcome back. The Bulldogs lead at 52 to 7 with 107 remaining in the third. Orange Coast with the ball, fourth and short. Looks like they're going for it at the 45 yard line. And Ayers hands it off right at the line. It <laughs> looks like they're pushing for it. We'll see where they down this ball to see if the Pirates got a first down. It looks good to me. Yeah. And they did. The ball carrier was Paul Mendoza not giving up. He had five of each of his offensive players on each side of him trying to push him across that 42-yard line, and they did for a first down, Orange Coast. Well, like our PA announcer said, it looked like a rugby scrum had broken out there. That's another Greg. <laughs> it's, the, it's the Greg twins. But uh, Orange Coast won that one. First and 10 from the Bulldog 42. Traratola with the ball, and it looks like he gets close to another first down. But well, the ball came out at the end of that play. I think they're going to say he was down. Right, they are. And the defender who grabbed the ball knows it, too. You can always tell by their reaction, right? The defender has the ball in his hand. He knows if it was a fumble or an interception, or if it was in time or whatever it might be. And uh, I was watching him and you knew he wasn't celebrating. And it's the end of the third quarter, Bulldogs 52 to seven. Orange Coast with the ball, we'll take a quick time out. You're listening to Bulldog Football at ahcbulldogs.com.
Welcome back to Allen Hancock College with three quarters of play in the books. It's 52 to 7. Bulldogs with the lead. I got to say, the Orange Coast College Athletic Department gets an A plus for pre preparedness. Uh, Tony, who is, I'm guessing, head of athletic communications, is the statistician as well, brought his own printer and printing us perfectly printed right on time. No complaints, no delay statistics. So maybe you want to go over this statistics a little bit here <laughs> for the first three quarters of play since Tony graciously schlepped his computer and printer from the south part of LA, LA. or is it Orange County? It's Orange County. Costa Mesa. Yep, Costa Mesa. Yeah. I'm from LA. We never really went south of LA County. I'm not lying. Well, the big thing is Bulldogs have 17 first downs. And third and short. Doesn't look like it's enough. Paul Mendoza, the ball carrier. 367 yards of offense for the Bulldogs. Wow. 129 for Orange Coast. They're going to go for it on fourth and short, it looks like, Greg. Well, they're only two of 11 on third down, but they're one of one on fourth down. Orange Coast, that is. John Allen has over 100 yards of rushing today. 108. Airs from the shotgun. Looks like Ooh. it's close again. Let's see where they spot the ball. Bulldogs are saying they held them. Let's see. Yep, Bulldogs. Bulldogs defense held them on a tough play on the fourth down. A Bulldogs offense will come onto the field. I'd like to take a moment to thank the corporate sponsors of Allen Hancock College Football, California Electric Supply, Community Bank of Santa Maria, Mountain Mike's Pizza, Oxford Suites, and Home Motor Chevrolet. Thank you so much for your support of Bulldog Football, Bulldog Athletics. We also want to thank the KT All-Star Gymnastics for their performance at halftime today. I love the little kid gymnastics. It's so fun. First and 10, Bulldogs on their own 33. And it's intercepted at the 40 yard line by Orange Coast. Ethan Castillo, a 33 yard interception for a touchdown. Castillo from Capitol High School in Louisville, Kentucky intercepted Clavel's pass and put six points, but there is a flag. Well, 33, we turn that 33 yards if it holds up there. Ethan Castillo. They're calling off the flag. There's another one, but they picked up one of the flags. Is a touchdown on the interception, first interception of the day for Orange Coast. Ethan Castillo, the freshman. When you're a freshman in that first game of the year, you're definitely trying to prove something to that coaching staff. And the kick is up, it's good. It's now 52 to 14, Bulldogs with the lead after the point after attempt, it's good. Take a timeout with 1325 remaining in the game. You're listening to Bulldog Football at ahcbulldogs.com.
Welcome back to Allen Hancock College, Orange Coast. 33-yard interception for a touchdown by Ethan Castillo. Good F extra point. It's now 52-14. to 14. Errol Darby back at the goal line to receive the kick. And he gets it at the 15. Runs towards the middle of the field and now crossing to the near side. Still moving at the 35. Makes two good cuts before he's tackled at the 40. And he might have fumbled the ball, but it was right at the whistle. Either way, John Allen was there to recover it. If it was a fumble, it still will be Bulldog football. Oh, Darby was a whirling dervish on that one. What a great run by the freshman, freshman Darby out of Oklahoma City. I love how many states and how many cities are represented on the Bulldog okay. team. And even more when we had those 20 and 30 extra players during the couple COVID years. This time, look at this run. What a run for the Bulldogs. Unbelievable. Malache Ethan, his first carry of the game. Unbelievable. Bele with the handoff. 60. A 60 yard touchdown run for a kid who wasn't even on the depth chart. Malachi Ethan. Well, he must be popular. Everybody Whoa. on the Bulldog sidelines is. So fun. Five seven one sixty. We're gonna call it Malachi. That's what Greg's going with. He's going Malachi. Yeah. It's just spelled differently. We're going for it. I like it. I'm sorry to the family in Texas for getting the, his name wrong. Kick is up. And it's good. Seven more points on the board for the Bulldogs. 59 to 14. Allen Hancock answers right back with a 60 yard touchdown run by Ethan. You're listening to Bulldog Football at ahcbulldogs.com. Welcome back to Allen Hancock College. 59 to 14 is your score. Kickoff bounces inside the 20. We're going with Malachi Afon. I'm hoping that all the Texas family will forgive me if I'm wrong. I can't find his pronunciation anywhere. I, and I do. I, I like to make my mother proud and get the pronunciations right. It's important to me. Well, it's always important to have your name pronounced correctly. I know. I, I'm obsessed. I'm also. You're a lucky baseball you have an announcer, so I try to really be respectful, and especially when the family's. Well, that's a challenge here. You have a lot of. We've got 12 players from American Samoa here, and each one of their names is a tongue, tongue he, twister. He, he is not from there, and I I feel like after 11 years, I've been pretty good at learning the Samoan and the Polynesian names. Um, it was hard for my first couple of years, but I also try to talk to the kids and have them tell me how they say yes. it too, which is even better. Orange Coast, first to 10 from their own 35. Ayers, I don't know who that was intended for. It didn't look like there was a receiver around. The closest player was Jack Gentile for the Bulldogs. And then it uh, looks like Trevor Thomas might have run the wrong route or there was some communication but problems, but I didn't see a wide receiver within five yards of that play. So you were wondering how many different states were represented by the Bulldogs. Oh, gosh. Did you count? Yes. Was I right? Was it 12? 17. 17. I love it. And they get to come out to California. Come on. Come on. There are some stories there. The beach wanna... is 20 minutes away. Come on. Second and 10. A flag on the play right away from behind. Looks like it's a false start against 
the Pirates. Five-yard penalty. When it's the official behind the quarterback, you can pretty much guess what it's going to be against the offense. Well, CJ, I was looking up to see what the most points the Bulldogs had scored. I thought maybe they were getting close here, but the record's 81 points oh, against gosh. Santa Monica in 2005. So they got a long ways to go yes. here. But we got a whole quarter of football, so. I was not I was not the announcer yet at that point, so I didn't see that. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> Mendoza with the reception and then a big hit. Number 24. What a hit by Russell Farrell. Lucky he held on to that ball. Oh, Irvin was doing the games then with Brad Mumberto. That was the radio announcers back then for that 81 point pummeling of Santa Monica in the early 2000s. Mm -hmm. Irvin is listening. Irvin, former color commentator for the Allen Hancock College Bulldogs. We are wishing him well. Had some health issues in the off season, but he's doing well. I talked to him at halftime. Talked to him yesterday. Ooh. That pass is up and either overthrown, it looks like, to Kanan Baptista, but we do have some, some wind, so we'll give a little credit where credit is due. A little Mother Nature and a overthrow. Well, that was a little give and go on that one, CJ. He gave a little pump fake, and the defender for the Bulldogs looked back, and but I think the wind did cut that pass down. But you're talking about a 50-yard throw there in the air. Makai Puga back at the 30-yard line awaiting the punt. Bulldog fans want another block here. <laughs> and you, you know, do you notice who's back to punt? It was Batista. Batista. He hmm. did the pooch punt in the first half, remember? He's not a kicker or a punter. He's the wide receiver, special teams guy that does it all. Does it all. Every team has one. Every team has a guy that just can play in every position. And sometimes they're using him for the pooch punt. Maybe a fake, you never know. Well, he does that rugby type kick, which allows your coverage to get downfield. And Orange Coast took their second time out of this half, down by 44 points, 45 points. Yeah, I did the math, I know, it's impressive. You were wondering how my math skills were, now you know. The only other person that's receiving punts and fielding kickoffs is Tyrell Darby, and he's got his left foot out of his shoe and is being tended to by Cheo, one of our amazing athletic trainers here at Hancock College. Ooh. And the high snap goes over Baptista's head, and he doesn't have any choice, but he's going <laughs> to still try for the pooch punt. <laughs> Well, he got the pun off somehow as it, as it was a fire drill back oh, there, man. jailbreak. And, uh, that isn't the first bad snap that he's had to deal with, anyone has had to deal with. It's, it's been happening on special teams. Well, he's six foot. And he still had to jump up and yeah. get it. And it was like he was going up for a rebound there on that snap. Good field position for your Bulldogs. Let's see what Chris Dutra and Coach Aguilar decide to do offensively now with a 45 point lead. We might see some of the kids we haven't seen yet. Elias Martinez is lined up as a wide receiver. Ooh, and, fumble. uh, a fumble on the snap. AJ Vele holds on to his own fumble. And actually, about a yard or so on that. Well, we've seen a couple of times on uh, exchanges, but that's typical in the first game of the season. It's junior college football, Greg. It's all year long. Sorry. Community college. Community oh, college. Oh, sorry. Thank you. You're dating yourself when you say junior college. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I have made some old jokes. Yet. He could get me back on that one. Yeah, people do not like to be called JCs. I don't know what it is. No.
Anthony Tucker getting his touches on the ball during the second half for the Bulldogs. You get to fill out your depth chart oh here. Oh my goodness, all week long I, I was, it was like an empty depth chart. It's the hardest week to prep. <laughs> Calling all the coaches, doing the best I can, looking at stats from last year in high school, guessing who's gonna play what. And now I get to fill it all in. And especially with this 45 point lead, I've got an extra spot for numbers. Look at that. Look at that. Allen Hancock College. <laughs> wow. Another addition another, to the depth chart. Another another name. I think it was Brian Abara. Oh my goodness, gracious. This is getting fun unless you try to remember everybody's numbers. <laughs> the celebration on the sideline is awesome. Spreading the love around on the offense for the Bulldogs. It's now 65 to 14. And if this extra point goes in, it's going to be a 66. That was a fun play to watch. Not the easiest to call when you don't know who's carrying the ball. And the Kick is up, and it is good. 66 to 14, the score. 10-16 remaining here in the game. You are listening to Bulldog Football at ahcbulldogs.com. Welcome back to Allen Hancock College. Ooh. Bulldogs are leading 66-14 and a big hit on special teams on the near sideline. Lots of celebration by the Bulldogs as they watch some of their young players get a chance to be on the field and prove their worth heading into game two next weekend. They're playing East LA down in Monterey Park. And uh, Orange Coast will be playing Moore Park at home next week. And the next home game for your Bulldogs isn't until the 23rd of September. Not going to be an easy task when Ventura comes to town on September 23rd to open up National Northern League play. What? Yep. Didn't the Bulldogs lose that Ventura game in the last couple seconds last year? Oh, man. Try to block those out. Why do you got to remind me? Come on, man. It's your first game. <laughs> Yeah, we we, pro the, we 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 got a we got high expectations for that game. Lots of people expecting big things from this squad, and it could be the year the Bulldogs beat Ventura. Second and nine, a short one-yard gain on the play. Congleton back in as the Ooh. play caller, and it's a complete pass. Complete pass to a wide receiver we haven't seen yet today, Joseph Flanagan. Trying new things. Well, the Bulldogs not too bad against Ventura. They're 18 wins and 22 losses. Been playing them since 72. They sort of been in and out of that league with Ventura too. Yeah, the every two years. Realignment is it's tough sometimes. I'm not lying. First and ten. Jackson Triratola, the ball carrier for Orange Coast, gets about five yards on the play. Well, that realignment's always tough for the Bulldogs because of our location here. We're affiliated, so we're the 
probably the more northernmost team in the Southern yes. Association. Yes. It's the same but problem. But the Northern League. Right. <laughs> Confusion all around when you're a broadcaster. I tell you, I'm not as smart as I look. Ooh. Congleton has some time. Looks downfield, but it's incomplete. Trying to find Royster. I think the Pirates got away with a hold there. Looks like all the fans have dealt with the cold today once the wind picked up, thanks to you. Uh, they're all still here. I'm glad I didn't mention <laughs> rain. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. <laughs> Ooh. A little Jeff deflection <laughs> on the pass intended for Joseph Flanagan. Nice defense. I think Darren Lewis tipped that ball. I think that's yes. the second time this afternoon he's tipped a pass. It's only 6'4", so he's got a big frame. Bulldogs have two timeouts remaining in this half. Pirates have one, just under eight minutes to play. 66-14 the score, your Bulldogs leading first game of the year. It does feel like football weather here in Santa Maria. Fourth and six, and they're going for it with Congleton, the play caller. He rolls to his right, can't find anyone, and runs out of bounds at the 45-yard line for a gain of two, and it'll be a turnover on downs. Bulldogs will come back offensively, and it looks like I'm guessing A.J. Valet will continue to call the plays for the Bulldog offense. It looked like Conlington was going to get enough for the yardage for the first down, but Bulldogs closed on him fast. And being down 66 to 14, you might as well try it. Going to see some new faces out here, new helmets, new numbers. Queen Offensively, Jordan. you're just going to, this is it. Ooh. That was Isaiah Thomas running back. His first his first carry of the game. This is what we get. Well, they gave him a yard on that play. I thought it, it was tackled for a loss. Well, I guess it's forward momentum. Well, by the time we get done, see. DJ, you're going to have that whole page filled out. That's good. It's good for next week. I need that. Afon, the ball carrier. He's down on the sideline holding his left knee. Well, when he went out of bounds, he ran into uh, some of the players that were standing on the sideline. And if you ever hit knee to knee, that can really uh, hurt for yep. about five minutes, and then usually you're right back up and nothing's bothering you. But hopefully that's all it is. Under seven minutes to play in the game. Third and four, or a long four, for the Bulldogs. This a pitch play to another new name, Caden Harris. Caden Harris getting a little play as well. well Harris uh, getting around the corner there, uh, turned on a little speed and picks up a first down. Another run play. Offense trying to run down the clock here. That was Anthony Tucker, the ball carrier. <laughs> Vele 
Valet coming over to the sideline to talk to Coach Aguilar. Running back in with Isaiah Thomas doing some of the running back duties here late in the game, along with Anthony Tucker. Thomas out of Putnam City High School in Oklahoma City. And Tucker out of E.A. Laney in Wilmington, North Carolina. Malik Pryor makes the tackle. Nowhere, nowhere to pitch it. Looks like we've got a timeout on the field. The Bulldogs will use their second timeout of this half, and we'll take a timeout as well with five minutes exactly to go in the game. Hancock leads at 66-14. You're listening to Bulldog Football at ahcbulldogs.com. Welcome back to Allen Hancock College with five minutes to play in the game. We're seeing a lot of freshmen out on the field now for the Bulldogs with this 42-point lead. And Valet, this time he gives it to Caden Harris. We see that uh, Malachi Ephon is in the trainer's area. They're working on his left knee. It's a fourth down for the Bulldogs, and they're going for it. Hmm. Taking the time off the clock, maybe? <laughs> Who knows? And not enough, Anthony Tucker carrying it, does not get enough for a first down, so they'll turn it over on downs to the Pirates with 4-11 remaining. Pirates have one timeout left, trailing by 42. What do you play for now, Greg? Well, you play for you don't get hurt, number one, and you might put somebody out there to see what kind of desire they have at this point. Maybe your third string running backs just to see, hey, CJ ready to play football at the community college level. Totally, totally. Can I wear my skates? <laughs> sort of like roller derby, I'll tell you that. First and 10 from their own 33, Congleton. Baptista a catch on the far side, and it looks like he got enough for a pirate first down. Well, if there's going to be a player of the game for Orange Coast, it would be Batista. He's done a little bit of everything today. A little today. bit of everything. Yep, exactly what we expected, except for the pooch punts. I did not expect him to do that. Coach did not mention those. Well, they don't like to tell you everything. <laughs> they can't. <laughs> not, not that I'm calling up the coaching staff for the Bulldogs. Trust me, that is not what I do. No, there's a code <laughs> with coaches about Of course things. there is. On a first down from the 45. Carver carried the ball for a five yard gain. It's now, ball's right at midfield for a second down for the Pirates. 3.07 on the clock. Congleton in the shotgun with Carver right beside him. Wants to pass. Not much time. 
but it's complete to Trevor Thomas for a first down at the 40. Thomas is getting up slowly. Well, he threaded the needle that time, CJ. That was right between two bull, Bulldog defenders. A nice touch there. Another first down for Orange Coast. Playing for pride at this point. 2.17 remaining in the game. They've got a timeout left. Congleton, another complete pass to Baptista again on the far mm. side. And there's a flag. And a yeah. pretty big hit right out of bounds maybe after he stepped out. Well, he was angling towards the out of bounds and I think the Bulldog player couldn't stop his momentum and carried him into the into Batista. And I think Batista is down over there on the sidelines. You're the, yes, first, he is. you're the first color commentator I've ever had that actually brought binoculars. Thank you for that. You're such a pro. I'm not used to being this close to the field, to tell you the <laughs> truth. <laughs> Well, to explain it, folks, we don't really have a press box. If we did, we'd be probably 50 feet higher than we are. We are about, what, 30 feet from the ground because we're on a catwalk that's put together by rubber bands and duct tape. But my gosh, Ooh, we're playing on campus. And there's an interception. Uh-oh. And there's some freedom. There's some space. There's some space for Jack Gentile. Jack Gentile with an interception for a touchdown, just under two minutes to play. 80 yards. Jack Gentile, the freshman out of Faith Lutheran in Vegas. That's fun. Well, it's the second touchdown on an interception return today. Wow, that is fun. Well, Coach Aguilar is from the defensive side. He's got a lot of what's <laughs> happened today. We've had Two interceptions for touchdowns, a blocked punt. And literally the first quarter was all about the Bulldog defense. Yeah, yes, they scored, but their the way that they held the Pirates to zero first downs was amazing in that first quarter. It was all defense. 22 yards in the first quarter. So it Tells you something. Acosta, he's getting tired. The kick is up and it's good. It looks like there is a flag on the play. Not sure who moved on that one. Wow. He's had 10 extra points, a field goal, 11 kickoffs. Ten pu two punts. And two punts. Roth Acosta is my MVP. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. You, you spread the wealth with everyone else. Yeah, there's hard to pick out anybody was, else that's uh, on I mean, the stat sheet here that would stick out. I'm not giving the C.J. Silas fa uh, player of the game, but if I did, it would be a Roth Acosta with how much kicking he's done. That kid's going to have to take a bath and ice up that foot before his game next week because he has been busy as a bee, making his own honey on the kicking team. He's the only guy, and he's killing it today. It's one of the most solid kickers I've ever seen for this squad since I've been here. Consistent, confident, knows oh. how to hold the ball. Well, it's an important part of the game. And you can see, I do high school, a lot of times if they can't kick that ball deep, <laughs> We got to give Hector Gill some some uh, credit. Isn't Hector Gill the? I think he's the kicking coach. He he kicked here years ago, not that many. He's, but I'm pretty sure that Hector, Hector Gill joined the the coaching staff. Yep, it's Hector Gill. He joined the coaching staff a couple years ago, and um, I'm giving him some credit. He doesn't get the C.J. Silas Player of the Game trophy, or Roth Acosta gets it, but Hector Gill gets some credit for. I mean, I've seen him at practice. There might be one other guy that's kicking at practice. But Acosta has done everything. It's the first time I've seen, and I, listen, I don't have a perfect memory, one guy do everything. We usually have a punter, the place for the Bulldogs, and we have a kicker. 
Acosta. Sometimes you have a long kicker and a short yeah, it's kicker. True, it's true, it's true. Right now, Acosta is everything. Well, let's hope he does not get hurt. Another quarterback. It looks like, who is it? Oh, Six. he's back. Ayers is back. And he finds Carver. Next week on the road at East LA. They're in Monterey Park. So only three non-league games for the Bulldogs and then they jump right into league play. That's changed too. It used to be five and five. When I was noticing that Ventura was gonna be here on the 23rd of September, I'm thinking, wow, conference play, league play starts and it does. That doesn't give Zion you Zion McGee with the first down catch. Doesn't give you much time to sort out uh, no, who no. you're going to play when you jump in at the fourth game of the year. For sure, challenge for the coaching staff. That was considered an incomplete pass. Or did he, he must have stepped out. I did not see it. You were too busy saying important things. Third and three, but you're right. It's 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 a different challenge and a different strategy for a coaching staff when you only have three preseason non-conference games, non-league. Ayers runs into trouble, but finds a hole on the far side and runs out of bounds inside the 50 for a pirate first down. They are not giving up. I I I actually do respect a team that plays all the way through to the end of the game. And we are almost there, under 40 seconds. And we've had no fights, you know. Usually Listen, don't jinx it, silly willy. <laughs> Goodness gracious. <laughs> this is community college football nonetheless. And you have been jinxing things. You jinx, you jinx the Mother Nature with the weather. One thing. Okay, just don't jinx that. They are probably not going to run a play. They're going to let the clock run out. And Orange Coast, like good sportsmen, they should be. Let the clock run out. We will take a quick timeout. Your Bulldogs win at 73 to 14. We will come back with your game statistics. Your Bulldogs success after the first contest of the year against the Orange Coast College Pirates. You're listening to Bulldog Football at ahcbulldogs.com.
73 to 14. You know we're back on the air, don't you? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Allen Hancock College. <laughs> the Bulldogs with an impressive 73 to 14 win over the visiting Pirates of Orange Coast College on the way to East LA next week. Check out ahcbulldogs.com where you can watch the webcast for that game. Uh, Greg Pensa, who is my color commentator for the day today, I thank you and appreciate you. Let me know some of the highlights and statistics from today's game. Well, the Bulldogs had 302 yards rushing on 45 carries, 517 total yards on 58 plays. So that's, what, eight yards per play? They held Orange Coast only 290 yards on 62 plays. Wow. 73 to 14, our score. Uh, Jack Clavel, not 8 of 10, so that's a great percentage, 158 yards. Valet, one completion, and it should have been a touchdown for 57 yards. So uh, that was uh, rushing. John Allen with 108 yards, 69 of that coming on one play. Malachi Efton, he had uh, 64 yards, but one of those coming on a 60-yard run. So offensively, 517 yards. We had uh, two interceptions returned for touchdowns, a block punt, which set up another touchdown. So the defense really showed up today. And Coach Aguilar, his first win as a coach here at Allen Hancock College, longtime assistant coach, you got to be happy with the performance today. And for the first ever time in my 11 year and game one career at Allen Hancock College. I am presenting the game ball for the CJ Silas player of the game to kicker Aroth Acosta for really doing it all for the Bulldogs, showing no exhaustion, uh, never losing his head, always confident and secure, whether he was do, uh, kicking a field goal, a point after, punting, or kickoffs. My player of the game for the opening contest at Allen Hancock College, Aroth. Acosta, sophomore kicker for the Bulldogs. Once again, I want to thank our technical director, Brian Dill, our spotter, Alyssa Dutra, Tony, amazing first time coming all the way up here to the Central Coast from Costa Mesa as the statistician, and I'm guessing head of communications for sports director, sports information director, I, you know, we called them the sports information director for years, and now so many schools are changing, changing it to communications manager. So I'm glad to know that there's still an SID left <laughs> on our planet because I can say I knew one when. I want to thank you, Greg Pensa, for showing up to do color for us. Our next home game and broadcast for the Bulldogs will be on Saturday, September 23rd, a first kick kickoff against Ventura, opening league play. 2 p.m. from Allen Hancock College. Once again, your score from Santa Maria, California, the Bulldogs 73, the Pirates of Orange Coast College 14. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. We appreciate you. Good night, everybody.